Hi guys, welcome back to Telling Tales with Mrs. Taylor. Today I have a special story that I'm going to read and it was written by my first graders about 10 years ago. And somebody wanted to hear it so I thought I would put it, read it to you. A um, little backstory. we wrote about losing things. How many of you out there have ever lost a mitten or a glove? Well, one of the reasons we're going to write, read, I'm going to read this story is my first graders were always losing one mitten, not, not both of them, just one. And we thought that'd be kind of a fun story to write about if one of the mittens was looking for the other mitten. So we decided that would be kind of fun. We um, also wrote about how Mrs. Taylor, me, what I was always losing something. I was either losing my glasses or I was losing my car keys. So we thought, let's just write a book about losing things. So today we're going to read Looking for Lefty because Lefty was the left mitten that was missing. And the kids decided to name the other mitten which would be the right mitten, Rebecca, because it starts with R. Plus, there was also a little girl in our room named Rebecca. So anyway, it was a lot of fun. You're going to recognize, if you go to Baton School, you might recognize some of the faces in here. If not, just enjoy it. And we had a lot of fun writing it. The kids wrote most of it. I helped them with spelling and punctuation. They even took the pictures of looking for Lefty. So here we go, looking for Lefty. Once upon a time, a hot pink mitten by the name of Rebecca, the right-handed mitten, found herself all alone on the steps of Baton School. Someone had carelessly dropped her, and if that wasn't bad enough, her brother Lefty, the left-handed mitten, was nowhere to be found. Yikes, a missing mitten. This happens all the time at Baton. Have you seen Lefty? Rebecca, the right-handed mitten, decided she had to hunt for her brother Lefty. She was hungry, so she smelled the sweet aroma of donuts coming from the teacher's lounge. Oh, must be sweet Wednesday. So she quickly grabbed a donut before the teachers could eat them all. She saw one of the teachers making coffee and asked, Have you seen Lefty? But when this teacher realized that a mitten was asking her a question, she dropped the coffee pot and ran back to her classroom. Lots of donuts, but no lefty. You know, teachers love to eat. Next, Rebecca went looking for Lefty in Mrs. Heilman's classroom. The first grade teachers were having their grade level meeting. There was a whole lot of gabbing going on, and Rebecca couldn't get a word in edgewise. So, she picked up a pencil and wrote the teachers a note asking, Have you seen Lefty? But the teachers asked, Who's Lefty? Oh, so, Rebecca gave up. Lots of talking, but no lefty. After that, she quick, quickly hopped down the hall and stopped to chat with Mrs. Bast, who used to be the music teacher. Since Mrs. Bast is also the lunch money lady, Rebecca asked her for some money. Mrs. Bass said, now why would a hot pink mitten like you need money? Mittens don't eat. Well, I like to eat stuffing. Get it? Stuffing in a mitten? Have you seen Lefty? asked Rebecca. Sorry, but I haven't seen your mitten, kitten, replied Mrs. Bast. Lots of money, but no Lefty.
Then Rebecca stopped to play some computer games in the computer lab. This is a fun sight, especially for the kids at the time. Looking for Lefty is kind of boring, thought Rebecca. I need some help. So lots of computers, but no Lefty. Then Rebecca decided to go find Mrs. Gahn. Now, back then, Mrs. Gahn was the school secretary. And just like all school secretaries, they know everything about everything at their school. She told Rebecca that she heard that Lefty might be in one of the teacher's pockets. However, she didn't know the name of the teacher. Uh, some of the teachers in this building can be a bit absent-minded, she confided quietly to Rebecca. Lots of office activity, but no lefty. After Rebecca talked with Mrs. Gahn, she felt a bit sick, so she visited the school nurse. Rebecca was feeling sad because she missed her brother Lefty. She thought she had a fever, so she went to the nurse and she took her temperature. Lots of understanding, but no lefty. Before Rebecca left the nurse's office, she heard someone moaning. It was a little boy by the name of Mason. He had a tummy ache. Rebecca hopped up on the cot, patted his shoulder, and said, You'll be okay. Just ask the nurse for a bag of ice. This made Mason feel better. Isn't Mason handsome? Lots of sick kids in the clinic, but no lefty. Where is that mitten? Mason suggested looking for lefty in the Title I classroom. Mrs. Wargo, who was a teacher back then, asked Rebecca to show the kids how to use their pointer finger, or in Rebecca's case, her thumb, while they read a book. Lots of good readers, but no lefty. After she left the Title I room, Rebecca had a good idea. She thought that maybe Lefty got blown up on top of the school shed. Be careful, Rebecca. Don't fall. Hmm. Lots of shingles, but no lefty. Then Rebecca looked for lefty on the blue slide. A little mitten like lefty could sure get moving on a slippery slide like this one. Lots of recess toys, but no lefty. Then Rebecca had a horrifying thought. What if Lefty was accidentally thrown into the garbage can? Thankfully, Lefty was not buried in the garbage. Lots of garbage, but no Lefty. P.U. Can you see Lefty looking in the garbage can? I mean, these kids, this poor mitten looked everywhere. Since it was almost lunchtime, Rebecca decided to rest and have some lunch. Looking for Lefty had made her very hungry. She had the grum bellies in the middle of her soft pink tummy. Lots of hungry kids in Baton's line, but no Lefty. Lefty's trying to get in the door. Now, Rebecca wanted to eat some of that white fluffy rice. Yummy for her mitten tummy. Ah, lots of good food. But no lefty. On the way out of the lunchroom, she heard the cries of all the stranded gloves and mittens hanging on the lost and found clothesline. The black furry glove said, will you please, please be my other half? Sorry, but we just don't have anything in common. We don't match, said Rebecca. Lots of lonely mittens, but no lefty.
By now, Rebecca felt so bad for the lonely gloves and her missing brother that she just had to share her feelings with Mrs. O'Neill, the school counselor. Mrs. O'Neill kindly told Rebecca, I'm sure you'll find Lefty very soon. Think positive thoughts. Lots of hugs, but no Lefty. Where is that mitten? After her session with Mrs. O'Neill, Rebecca was feeling much better, and at the end of the hall, she stopped to chat with the kindergarten teachers. They just finished a workshop on everyday math. Lots of teachers, but no lefty. And there's Rebecca, right by my finger. Way in the background is Mrs. Snyder. Now she's at baton school. And so is Mrs. Sifke. Later she went looking for Lefty in the library. Rebecca found a book about a teacher running for president of the United States. She had one of the librarians check it out for her. Lots of books, but no Lefty. Grief. Where was Lefty anyway? Rebecca looked for him in the art room. As usual, Lefty wasn't there, so she decided to paint a picture of him just in case he was never found. And the art teacher taught her how to hold the paintbrush. Lots of art stuff, but no Lefty. I don't know if you can see Lefty there holding the paintbrush. Always look for the pink mitten. And you know my students took almost all these pictures. You'll know this next guy if you go to Baton. Next, Rebecca went to everyone's favorite class, Jim. Maybe Mr. Sifke had seen Lefty. Lefty loved sports. She figured he might be hanging with Mr. Sifke. So Rebecca decided to thumb a ride on the scooter. Mr. Sifke made sure she wouldn't fall and break her thumb though. Lots of fun but no Lefty. Now, I don't know if we're ever going to find Lefty. Although she didn't know it, Rebecca was getting very close to finding Lefty. She thought Lefty might be playing with the stuffed animals in Mrs. Taylor's room. Oh, so close, but no banana. Lots of stuffed animals, but no Lefty. <coughs> Excuse me. By this time, Rebecca was very discouraged. She decided to look for Lefty in two more places. She went to Mrs. Gillum's class first. Mrs. Gillum, teacher extraordinaire, was teaching another magnificent math lesson. Lots of math boxes, but no Lefty. Could Lefty have been dropped in the music room? Who knows? Anyway, Mrs. Bass taught Rebecca how to find middle C on the piano. You might be asking yourself if this story is ever going to end. Not if Mrs. Taylor's first graders had anything to say about it. They had trouble with the concept of editing a story. Well, lots of piano keys, but no Lefty. At last, Rebecca had no choice but to go to the principal's office. So she asked Mrs. Van Doren, who you know, if she could think of a teacher who might have lost Lefty. Uh, so Mrs. Van Doren thought and thought and thought. Eureka, she said, I can only think of one teacher who could have lost Lefty, said Mrs. Van Doren. Why, this teacher loses everything. Her key card, her books, her purse, and more. I will call her down to my office right now, and she especially loses her glasses. Mrs. Taylor, would you please come to the office immediately? We have a mystery to solve. 
Do you happen to have a hot pink mitten without a partner somewhere in your classroom? Asked Mrs. Van Doren in her principal's voice. Oh, uh, I think so, if I can only find it, said Mrs. Taylor over the PA. There's Rebecca on Mrs. Van Doren's shoulder, making sure she gets that message to Mrs. Taylor. Well, and I remember this day. Mrs. Taylor came running to the office. She was so scared. She was embarrassed. She was out of breath from running. After all, back then she was 55 years old. Mrs. Gon said, you need to get into the office now. Mrs. Van Dorn wants to see you about something that is missing. And there I am with my head down. I was feeling really awful. In this story, that is. Hmm. What's that you're holding in your hand, Mrs. Taylor? Is that Lefty the missing mitten? Asked Mrs. Doran, Van Doren. Yes, it's Lefty. Oh, I found him in my coat pocket. I must have dropped the other mitten somewhere in the building. I'm always losing things, said Mrs. Taylor. Yes, I know, said Mrs. Van Doren, but I think Rebecca was really the missing mitten. Not Lefty, said Mrs. Van Doren. After the tears, the hugs, and the sighs of relief, Rebecca, Rebecca and Lefty were reunited. They gave each other a big mitten handshake. As the old saying goes, nothing is lost in the kingdom. Or is it? As Mrs. Van Doren looked on with disbelief, Mrs. Taylor realized, oh, she couldn't find, now she couldn't find her reading glasses. And I needed those to teach school. Luckily for Mrs. Taylor, she had 20 darling children who took care of her each and every school day. We found your missing reading glasses again, Mrs. Taylor. They all laughed with joy. Now, you may not be able to see it, but that's how many glasses I have or had back then, and they're all holding glasses, and my spare glasses and sunglasses, and I still couldn't find any. These kids who are in this picture I think now are seniors in high school and are going to graduate. The end at last. Well, this is one of the favorite books over the many books that kids have written for me, but this is a special one. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on Thursday where I'm going to read a couple of Easter stories and then I'm going to take a break while you're on spring break. Bye.